guys, welcome to your greenhouse painting class. In front of you, you should have your canvas, your cup of water, a paper towel, a large brush, a small brush. For your paints, you should have brown and black, yellow and that cranberry maroon color, and then black and white. You do not have to pour your colors out onto your wax paper, um, except for when we mix later. I just do on mine so you can see the colors a little bit better. If you do not have all those materials, not a problem. Just push pause on the video and come back to us whenever you're ready. The first thing you're gonna do is grab both of your brushes, dip them in the water, and swirl them around and get them nice and clean. Once you're done, gently pat them onto your paper towel. For our first step, we are gonna go in there and just start painting our house green because that green's gonna need several coats. Uh, so throughout the painting, you can always go back and touch it up and give it another coat so the green is a little bit more vibrant. So I will start with my small brush and my green paint, small brush and green paint. I'm going to start going around all of my windows. Start with these two here on the right. They'll just kind of let me know where to stop with my green. I'll go around the other two windows on the other side of the door. And all I'm doing is going around them and creating an outline. There's a window up here to this triangle shape. These windows up here as well. And while you are up here in this space, you can go ahead and use your small brush and your green paint. Just kind of fill in the space surrounding the two windows up here. These are all the green up here. Right. Also go ahead and go around your door with the green paint. And now I'm just gonna start outlining inside the house as well. Because I want to keep my lines nice and clean. I want to know where to stop with my green later on too. The roof will be white with snow, so don't worry about putting any green on that roof. And don't worry about this upside down V shape. We can go in there and find it later on as well. So if your paint is shiny, that means it's still wet, you are going to have to go back whenever it's ready for your painting and give your greenhouse more coats. So as you're painting along, if you can ever go back and give it another coat so it's a little bit darker, it's a little bit more solid, go ahead and jump back. And I'll be doing that throughout mine too, but if you ever feel like your paint is not so shiny and dry, you can always go back and build more layers on top of the green. I'm gonna also go between these little window areas right here, these little sm small spaces. Go underneath here too. Just using my small brush to get into those smaller areas. Go underneath this upside down V. And then you can jump to your big brush whenever you're ready. I'm just gonna leave my small brush with a little bit of green on it still because I might jump back to it. But I wanna show you every area of the house that's gonna be green. Just taking my big brush, my green paint. It's okay if you go over your pencil lines. You can still see it and we'll be covering them up with paint later on. So there is that first coat of green. It's definitely not gonna be solid enough. You can see those brush strokes. I wanna get rid of that later on. So 
so here is all the spaces that my house is going to have this kind of really pretty olivey green color nice smooth lines smooth out any bumps that you have get rid of any harsh outlines that might still appear just kind of smooth them out And for now, I'm gonna wash and dry both of my brushes really well. But later on, again, I will come back and give that green a second coat. Make sure all that green is off your brush. You can even like hug your two brushes by wrapping them around like so. Get all that green off all the way around on your brushes. Go in there one more time. Make sure they're nice and clean. My next step is painting my sky gray. It's a tiny bit of black and some white on my brush and I'm constantly moving my brush. I'm not in the, in the same spot over and over again. So I'm always moving around in all types of directions. Um, you don't have to mix on your wax paper. You can just go in with your big brush and just a little bit of black, maybe even tap some off on your paper towel and then just kind of go in there with the white. So a little bit of both on your brush. And I'm just kind of moving around. And I do want my sky to be a little bit lighter. So I'll just go in there in just a moment and add white to my brush before this dries. So the white will blend in a little bit better when they're both wet colors or when they're both wet and moving together. Excuse me. Just kind of going in there moving that brush all that space above where my snow on the ground is going to be again i'm just going to move my brush in all types of directions be careful of your house be careful of the chimney area kind of go a little bit slower when you, with your brush but now i'm just going back to more white and if you feel like it's too dark let it dry for just a little bit and then go back to more white so that white kind of lays on top of the gray a little bit more and doesn't keep blending as much. Be very careful. And then I'm just gonna start moving my brush around. Okay, you can outline a little bit too and then start moving that brush around. In a moment, I'll also start painting the left side the right side and the top part where the sky kind of folds over on my canvas. So again, if you feel like it got too dark, give it a minute or two to dry and then you can build white on top of it a little bit easier. If it's having a hard time moving your gray sky, you can always add a little bit of water, tap it on your paper towel, and then go over your gray, and that'll help smooth it out and kind of move it a little bit easier if it's getting stuck. Keep moving that brush, get it to a nice light gray. I still want to see those brush movements in the sky, so be sure you're constantly moving your brush. It's a nice light gray sky. And let's go ahead and paint the top of your canvas. I'm just gonna stand my canvas up. Just kind of whatever I have on my brush, you can go back to more white. And all of that top layer of my sky will be gray. Perfect. 
Okay, and on the left side, where that pencil line kind of folds over, I'll create a line. And then I'll start painting the side as well. I can go back for a little bit more black if I need to. Just be sure to pat some off onto your paper towel before you make it official so it doesn't get too harsh. So I've created the line over. Oops. And then I'm painting up and I'm again moving my brush. Add a little bit more black to my brush. Tap on the paper towel and then make a line that way. And then it's just slowly work my way up. So again, you should have a nice light gray sky, carry it over to the left, carry it over to the right, and then carry it over to the top. If you are not done, not a problem. Take your time, you can always pause the video. Be sure where you're getting close to the house, it looks nice and neat, you don't have any canvas kind of peeking through. Same down here where the land is. Be sure everything looks nice and neat. Again, you can use your water to help your paint move a little bit faster. And again, I'm just gonna constantly move my brush. Do not wash off your brush once you're done because we are gonna go into this trail with some of the gray that's on our brush. And you can always go back and add a little bit more black if you want again. A tiny bit of black, tap on the paper towel. So I'll go in there, add a little bit of black. And my trail, I'm just kind of moving down with my brush. Just short, choppy movements to have another texture to where I can see that movement of the brush. So short, choppy movements on my way down on the trail. Nice and clean. I think with mine, I wanna go back just a little bit and add a little bit more white to my sky. But this is the time before we move on, if you wanna change anything with your sky or your trail, go for it. I just wanna get a little bit lighter. And after I'm done with this, I think I'm gonna go ahead and go back and do another coat of green on the house. I would recommend at least three coats. So now, I'm, while I've given my green some time to dry, I can go back and give it another coat. I think that's a better gray. It's a nice light gray. trail down clean no big bumps on your paint make sure everything's working together fast movements up here down movements down here go ahead and wash and dry your big brush really well and then go over your green I'm just gonna go back to my big brush. You can go back to your small brush for smaller areas again as well. I'm gonna just start off with my big brush. Give it another coat. And already there's such a big difference between the first coat and second coat. the right side of the house make sure again everything looks nice and clean you can always drag your brush and kind of outline and go into this area a little bit more okay 
and down with my brush. You can still see that um, upside down V shape too. The pencil line should still be poking through. So you can go over it a little bit. And don't forget about the space up here. I think I'm going to use my small brush. your second coat and again a huge difference and you can go ahead and wash and dry when you're done before I put any trees on top I'm gonna wait for my sky to dry just a little bit more I am gonna mix here in a moment I'm gonna mix some brown and white to start painting the deer so be sure you have your wax paper somewhere close by. For the deer, I am going to grab my small brush. I'm gonna get one, two scoops of brown, and one scoop of white. I'm just gonna mix a nice light brown. I do want to add a little bit of yellow as well. I know it sounds kind of funny, but it's going to give it like a little bit of a softer look. So once I'm done mixing the brown and white, I can go back to, the, I can go to that mustardy yellow I haven't used yet. Mix it in there, just a little bit softer. I'm going to grab a little bit more. And if you want it a little bit darker, you can go back to more brown. If you want it a little bit lighter, add more white if you want it to kind of be a little bit warmer like to have a nice warm yellow go back to more of your yellow i think i might go back for just a little bit more brown on mine maybe just another scoop all right and once you get that perfect brown for the deer can start painting and I'm just gonna go over the leg area first oh and if you have a big chunk after mixing just kind of wipe some off on your paper towel I'm gonna go over the legs first so one and two three and four just barely push on your brush don't push too hard and then I'm gonna go over the pencil lines And this might, again, need two coats, maybe three coats, until it looks a little bit more solid. Go up into the tail area a little bit more, the face area. So I'm just using my small brush because it's small areas. And just barely push on your small brush again for the ears. And there you are. Again, I'm going to give that maybe a minute or two to dry, and then I'll go back and add another coat in just a moment. Once you're done, do not clean off your brush. Do not clean off your brush. I'm just going to go in there with more brown on my small brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to softly outline um, the space to the left and to the right of the house. So just kind of just kind of sweep almost. You don't want to push too hard. To the right. I'm gonna go underneath it as well. And just barely pushing on it. To my trail, I'm gonna go to the left 
I'm going over the pencil lines so I can kind of get rid of them. This one as well. I'll even carry over those lines to the left and to the right. Don't worry about down here, the trail doesn't have to go up. Once you're done, just gonna wipe some of that off onto your paper towel. And then almost with like a dry brush, sweep some of this brown around the deer onto the left side. So there's barely any brown on your brush. It's just gonna be just kind of like a dry brush technique. If you have any bumps with your paint up here, just smooth it out as well. And you can put that brush aside. And we're gonna jump to our bigger brush in our white paint, so our big brush and our white paint. And we're just gonna start painting that snowy area. And it's okay if that brown touches the white, they are just kind of working together. The sides will also be painted white, the bottom will also be painted white. And again, if you get too much brown paint on there, just let it dry. And then come back to more white. And then it's just kind of touching it lightly still see it but just kind of peeking through here and there with the brown line got too much on there just wipe some off on your paper towel I'm gonna jump to the right side my shaky canvas go up here and just kind of go close that outline overlap just a little bit come down be very careful outline underneath here a little bit and work my way down so a nice snowy area down here the left side the right side the bottom all white as well so underneath the the lines that I created before and on the bottom then I'm gonna go and just give this one more coat on either side so it looks a little bit cleaner If the legs got a little bit too thick, you can always kind of white it out just a little bit, get a cleaner line. All right, and there is our snow on the ground. And then go ahead and wash and dry your brush really well. We'll go back to our small brush and give our deer another coat of that brown mix that we had. And then before we put any white or any of that, that eye area on there, we'll let it dry one more time.
you can wash off your brush after that second coat. The next step, whenever you're ready for it, and if you're still working on any of these areas at any time, you're welcome to push pause. Once you're done with the sky, you've done the two coats on the house, the two coats on the snow, the two coats on the deer. Again, you can wash and dry your small brush. And then we're gonna go in there and paint all of the windows yellow. If your green is still really wet, just give it a little bit of time to dry. Then you can go in there and fill in the yellow windows. You can outline and fill in so you get that nice rectangle shape back. You can even give it a minute or two to dry and go back for a second coat if you want it to be a little bit more solid. Be sure that everything looks nice and soft too. You don't want any of those bumps. There you go. Then once you're done going back, giving it two, maybe even three coats if you feel like it. Take your time. Gonna go in there and paint the door and um, the kind of chimney area that really pretty maroon color. So go ahead and wash and dry off your small brush. Go into that really pretty like cranberry wine maroon color. And then you can outline and fill in. One and then the door. And again, do two coats, three coats. The more coats you do, the more solid it's gonna be. Take your time with those as well. Again, outline and fill in so you keep that nice shape. All right. And once you're done, you will uh, start painting your tree. So that'll, or your two trees actually, will be in just a moment. For my trees, I'm gonna have a little bit of brown and a tiny bit of black on my small brush. So whenever you're ready for it, be sure your small brush is nice and clean. I'll start with the right side first. So brown and a tiny bit of black, and you can even just kind of pat some off onto your paper towel so you don't have too much on there. I might go back for a little bit more. Let's see, it's a nice dark brown on there. Kind of more in the middle area, I'm gonna make a line that's gonna pass my um, house. So it's going to be about up here, make a point. So it'll be about that high up. So I'm going to take my small brush. Let me go back to a little bit more paint. Brown, black. Make sure it's a nice dark brown on there. And then I'm going to go all the way up to this height right here. It's okay if it has a little bit of a wiggle to it. Always come back down to kind of smooth it out. Be 
see what a nice dark brown. For my second tree, I do need to be aware that I'm going to build a snowman later on. So think about that space for your snowman. Get a little bit of brown, a little bit of black on my small brush. Tap some off. Be aware where I'm going to put my snowman. I'm going to be here a little bit more to the left. And I'm going to build just a little bit lower than the tree on the right side. So it's going to be just a little bit shorter. So let's see. Yep, so just a tiny bit shorter on that left side. Again, be aware of your snowman space later on. Come down on there. I'm just building a little bit more black on top of mine so it's just a little bit of a darker brown. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my brush. I pushed a little bit harder on my brush here. I wish it was a little bit more gentle, but just remember the harder you push on your brush, the thicker the lines become. Later on, if I really wanted to, I can go in there with some gray and bring it in a little bit. And we'll let that dry for a moment. All right. Let's jump back to this tree while this one is drying. We're gonna go back to our small brush, be sure it's nicely washed and dried. We're gonna go to our green paint. And for the greenery, it's just almost like a mustache uh, shape. I'll start from the very top. I'm just gonna come down and up down and up. I'm going to give it a little bit of space. Come down and up. And they're all about the same length. This one I would maybe give it a little bit more of a point to on top. Give it a little bit of space. Come dip down and then come up. Dip down and then come up. A little bit of space. Okay. And then one last one. Be sure you have a lot of space down here, so don't go too low. And go back and touch up that just a little bit. And this is something else that you might want to give some time to dry and then go back to. Give it another coat of green. Looks like I have five areas of this, or five little sections. I did go on top of the brown, the dark brown that I made. I think I want to kind of connect this part a little bit more to the ground. Clean it up a little bit more too. Okay. All right, so same thing to the other side. Small brush, a little bit of green paint. And I'll start from the top again. Maybe make it a little bit more pointy on top. Just come along, dip down and come up. a little bit of space, dip down and come up. Dip down, come up. Again, remember you can have your snowman here, so make sure there's plenty of room for your snowman.
go back and give that another coat as well. Okay, and then I want to go to clean off those ends. Same on this side. I think I'm going to come in a little bit from the edges the ends of those trees a little bit more. I'm going to push down and come in, push down and come in. Same with that one. Alright. And then while I'm on the greens, I'm going to put my small brush aside and I can go back for another coat on the house. Be very aware of any uh, wet yellows or that pretty maroon color. And I can go in there with a third coat. my small brush, my green if I need to get into those small areas. I'll touch up some of my maroon a little bit more now that it's a little bit more dry. my yellow a little bit more now that's more dry be very aware of any of that wet green paint I'm going to go back to my deer now that it's a little bit more dry. For my deer, I'm going to add a little bit of brown and a little bit of black on my brush, kind of like I was doing before, and pat some off to my paper towel. I'm going to sweep some black here and there, uh, pretty much where the pencil lines were before. So on the black area, go ahead and put a little bit more black. So, so it's kind of like a dark chocolatey brown like my trees. A little bit there, it's more on top, more in the belly area, in the, in the front. It like helps get that shape back a little bit more on top of the face. I'm just kind of sweeping very lightly on my small brush, barely pushing down, back legs, the tail area, so just a little outline. It kind of helps cover up those pencil lines as well. There's also the eyes, so I'm gonna dip my brush in my cup of water again, and I'm gonna bring my brush in to a nice like point. My brush has been worn, so it's not gonna be as pointy as yours, but a little bit of black paint, so a tiny bit. Pat some off, and the eye is just over here to the right, and I'm barely pushing down. I'm gonna make kind of like a U shape. I think my brush might have had too much water on it. Let me try that again. 
just like a little dip of your brush. Make sure yours does not have too much water in it. It's a little bit of a dip. Again, your brush is not going to be as worn as mine, so hopefully it makes a nice, cleaner kind of U-shape. And since it's still kind of wet here, then I'm just going to kind of sweep it in a little bit more and clean it up just a little bit. So while the paint is wet, I can still kind of mess with it. Be very careful. It's gonna keep moving. And again, if it got yours got too um, too thick, let it dry. I'm just gonna go and surround it with some more of that brown mix. In a moment, I'll go back and add some white on top too. But so far, you have your brown mix, a little bit of brown and black to outline it, and the black. And a U-shaped eye. I think I'm going to go back on my trees and give it another coat of green. Solid. There's a lot of going back and touching up on this one, waiting for things to dry. go in there with a little bit of white and black and just kind of bring some of that line work in now that that brown is a little bit more dry just added a little bit of white and the tiny bit of black on my brush now I can just bring that line in just a little bit more Barely pushing on my brush, cleaning it up just a little bit more. All right, next step is going to be my curly cues uh, of smoke coming from my chimneys. I'm going to use that same small brush, be sure it's nicely washed and dried. I'm going to go in there with a little bit of black, tap some off on my paper towel. And my two curly cues almost look like question marks. So I'm gonna make the smaller one first. So this one's gonna be a little bit shorter. This one's gonna be a little bit taller. So the one on the right, I'm gonna come up from my chimney just a little bit. Make this kind of curly cue, question mark shape. And then come in just a little bit. And there's just a little bit of black on my brush. Same thing on this one. I'm gonna come up just a little bit. Make sure this one's a little bit taller. It's kind of rainbow shape right here. And then bring it in. So I kind of curved over to the right, made that rainbow shape and brought it in. Before those dry, I am gonna add a little bit of white to my brush in just a moment. I wanna tap off some of that black so I don't wanna have too much black on there. So I'm gonna go back to a little bit more white once I tap some off, tap off some of that white. I'm just gonna sweep some white kind of coming down on that same shape. I don't wanna totally get rid of the black, but I'm just gonna sweeping some white 
on top of it and just kind of rub it onto the side of it here and there. And if it looks a little bit rough, you can always add a little bit of water to your brush and kind of go over it, but it's like choppy, choppy movements I'm working down. Again, if you want to smooth it out, you can add water. Tap on your paper towel and just kind of go over it to smooth it out a little bit more. That's up to you if you like the way it looks. A little bit more rough and textured. Yeah. Go back for a little bit more black. So don't completely lose the black in there. Because I want to have a little bit of black, a little bit of gray, and a little bit of white all kind of working together. All right, before we move on, this is kind of like last chance for your greens. If you wanna go back with your big brush and your green paint, you can go back and give your house another coat. I'm gonna do mine really quick. You can also go back and do another coat of green on your trees. So this, this is actually, I think, our fourth coat if you're going in for another round. we're going to come back to the house and finish it off in just a moment and we want to make sure everything's nice and dry My green is still a little bit wet in the tree, so if I wasn't videoing, I would probably just kind of pause it for a couple minutes and then go back to it, because I can still see that white poking through. So I want this to be nice and dry before I put the ornaments or the, the snow on top. All right, and while my green is drying, I'm going to wash and dry both of my brushes and I'm going to start making my snowman. My snowman, I'm just going to use my small brush. Make sure it's really clean because we're going to go into white. And with your small brush and a little bit of white paint, make sure it's not dripping off your brush. I'm going to make two circles, one for the body and one for the face. I'm going to work down here. Just make one circle, pretty mini. It's sitting on top of the line a little bit. And then the face area, which is gonna be a little bit smaller. And give a little bit of room for your house so you have some space to build the arms out on, off of. Okay, just the smaller head and a little bit of a bigger body. And while I have white on my brush, I can start adding a little bit of white to the deer, so white. I'm gonna sweep a little bit of white in the back of the deer. I'm gonna sweep a little bit kind of in the front, pushing down just a little bit harder. Go up a little bit higher too. And you can add some on the logs. on the back. You can add some up here on the face on top. A little shadow and light to make it look like it has some a dimension to it. You can wash and dry.
And while my snowman is still drying, I can go in there and start adding some ornaments on my tree. If it's still too wet, just be careful. But all I'm doing is adding a little bit of maroon to my small brush and I'm going underneath them a little bit and just kind of pushing down. And you can add as many ornaments as you want. You can have some that are smaller, some that are a little bit bigger and you're pushing down a little bit by tapping, I guess, more on your brush. If you happen to catch some green, just watch it, uh, well, excuse me, just clean it off onto your paper towel. So small brush, my cranberry color. I'm just gonna make your ornaments on the bottom part of your trees. Make sure you have a nice variety of small and big. I'll do the same on the other side. Make some ornaments on the bottom. pushing down on my small brush. Make sure to build in some dots closer to the center. Once you're done, you can wash and dry your small brush. And we'll put, uh, go back and put some snow on top of our trees. But again, our white, uh, excuse me, our green is probably still too wet. So we'll go back and um, after a little, they're a little bit more dry. Next step is going to be outlining our house in a dark brown. So pretty much where the pencil line was before, you can still kind of see it peeking through. I'm going to go in there with my small brush. And this time I'm actually going to mix a dark brown on my wax paper. So a small brush, maybe take one, two, three, four scoops of brown, maybe one scoop of black, and make a nice dark chocolatey brown. So four scoops of brown, one scoop of black is your recipe. And remember, I just kind of wipe off the sides of my brush after I'm done or patting it off on my paper towel so I don't have a big chunk of paint on there. Let's start with the shape of our house. And if your green is still pretty wet, maybe give it a couple more minutes to dry. Um, I'll start up here. Start where I can see the pencil line really well. And I'm just barely pushing on my brush. You don't have to outline around the chimney area. And I'm just covering up those pencil lines with my dark brown. Later on, I'll put some snow on it. We're going to work from dark to light. Always go back for a little bit more dark brown. Nice long smooth lines. Oops, you got some on there. It's okay, it'll be covered up with snow. Go back to your chocolatey brown mix. Start coming down. And on the right. That's a good place to start for framing your house. I'm going to come back up here and these two kind of upside down V shapes. I'm going to go in there and just kind of push on my small brush again with my dark brown mix. And I'm going to work underneath and to the right. If the yellows um, are dry in your windows, you can start outlining the shape of your windows and then making the cross shape inside. Okay, my brush has been used many a time, so hopefully your small brush is a little bit better. You can always bring it to a point and you can have that cross shape in the middle. I'll 
So I'll outline have that cross shape in the middle. Same here. Make sure your windows are nice and dry. You'll be doing the same thing. You'll be outlining and then filling in with that cross shape. And you're barely pushing on your brush, just on the tippy toes. And outline this triangle shape. Don't worry about that upside down V. Find that a bit later. I do want to go around this door too, but it's like very sweepy. So I'm just going to sweep it underneath, sweep a little bit to the left, go on top, and then a little bit to the right. My lines get a little bit too thick, but I'm going to build some snow on it in just a moment. Then here as well. I can go in there and start building some cross shapes inside them as well. So just kind of barely push on my brush, kind of have more of like a sweepy movement. Barely pushing in your brush. I think that is it as far as outlining goes. Perfect. Then you can wash and dry your small brush. And if your um, brown lines around your window got a little bit too thick, you can always go back after they're dry and just kind of build in with your green a little bit too. I think my brush has kind of had its last day, so it's making very thick lines even when I push softly, but you can let that brown dry and then bring it back in with some green. And we'll let that dry for a moment and we'll work on our snowman. Let's start with the snowman's hat. So small brush, a little bit of black paint. And for the hat on top of the head, you're just gonna make a straight line from side to side. And then there's gonna be a rectangle shape sitting on top. Perfect. And then since we have our small brush and our black paint, let's go ahead and outline the face. So I'm gonna go in there on the left side, on the right side. Make sure that white's nice and dry. Bring mine to a point. It's gonna scatter that. I think I might switch brushes in just a moment on mine. It's having a moment. Let's see how it'll do here. And then same on the left side and then the right side of the body, so left and right. Perfect. Don't worry about this area because we're gonna build a scarf on it later. But you are gonna go in there and start building the arms. You are still gonna have a little bit of black on your brush, maybe even pat some off, and a little bit of brown, pat some off. And the arms, be careful if your black paint is too wet down here, but I'm gonna go up on the left side, up on the right side, almost like it's making the letter Y. And then I'm gonna give it fingers by just going in there and making the V shape. So a little bit of brown and black. You can even use your brown and black mix you need to outline your house a little bit too, whatever is best. 
at that V shape right there. Again, so sorry for my crazy brush. Just a little bit of brown, a little bit of black. Tap some off. And then we'll put this my fingers on there. So cute. Perfect. And we'll let that kind of dry for a moment before we go in there and add more detail. All right. Let's go back to our house and we'll start building. Excuse me, let's go back to our tree since they're a little bit more dry and start building some snow on top and then we'll go to our house. So I'm going to wash and dry my small brush. I'm going to get it really, really clean. And all I have to do for my trees, go into my small brush and my white paint and be sure it's nice and dry. And I'm just going to patting on top. There's still green exposed underneath. And if you start catching some green, you can always wipe it off on your paper towel. Go back to that area, but later. But it's so much fun. You're just kind of jumping with your small brush and creating some fun bumpy texture for the snow. We'll do the same thing on the other one too. I love this part. It's so relaxing, especially after all those fine lines we have to make and it's kind of just being very mellow with our small brush. So again, same thing on the other side, white paint, make sure you don't have too much on there. Just gonna bounce on the top. Cute. Perfect. We'll also make some white snow on top of our chimney. If you still want to see the um, the cranberry color exposed, so just gonna do it on top. Just push down. Same idea. Make sure you don't have any red on there. If you do, wipe it off on your paper towel. And on the ground, same idea. On the right side, I'm just gonna jump with my brush, come down, come up. Make sure it's not too much. There we go. Just kind of going up and down with my brush, like so. That same texture. And remember that upside down V shape? I do want you to go just a little bit up above your triangle and barely push on your small brush and get that upside down V shape back. So I'm just barely pushing, goes out a little bit further on the right and go smooth that right and the left. We do wanna start covering up your roof with white paint. Just go ahead and start painting your roof with white paint. All that white canvas that you see peeking through. So white on the snow, white on that upside down V, and now we're just going in there and covering up the white in our roof. want to see any of that white canvas peeking through. Get some on your brown, not a problem. We're going to go up there in just a moment. Just going to cover up that brown a little bit too. We want to make sure all of our canvas is covered as well. And 
to thin out any lines I draw below the curve. If you cover too much of your brown and black, just let it dry and then just you can build brown and black on top of it once the white is dry. A little bit of water to this area. And clean up the ends by cleaning up white. All right. And on top of the roof, you can go in there with a little bit of white on your small brush. I'm just gonna jump some on top of the roof. Tiny, tiny bit, a little bit to the left as well. Some white sitting on top of the roof between the chimneys. I'm gonna go in there with my snowman, thin out that line just so that the knots won't dry. Much better. Okay, perfect. All right, we are gonna continue with snow on our house. So I'm gonna take a little bit white, pat some off on my paper towel, and I'm gonna start kind of going on top of my windows with just barely any white. And I'm just gonna sweep a little bit of white going side to side with bare, it's almost like that dry brush technique again. So just kind of going on top of the brown on the top part of the window. So I'm just barely going on top of it. Pushing down, sweeping side to side. Up here too, it just looks like there's a little bit of snow sitting in this window area here. There. I even have some more kind of coming down on top of these wet areas. Pushing down as well. Around the door, I do have some white. To the left, I'm just going to sweep white. This just looks like the border. It doesn't look like the snow that's on there to the above it and then to the right. And I'll go back and decorate my door just a little bit more. And then it's almost like I have these like icicles kind of sitting, um, coming down from my um, roof as well. There's a little bit of white still on my brush. I'm going to come down just a little bit of sweeps to kind of soften up this line. And then over here, I'm just going to start sweeping down, get this brush a little bit more wet. So it's almost like little icicle lines coming down. I'm just going to sweep in with my brush, I'm going over those brown lines. I'm just going to sweep in some shorter ones, some longer ones, just kind of some cute little pieces of ice coming down. And even here to the right side, I just have some sweeps of white coming down. I have a little bit more snow sitting on top of this one so it's not so harsh. Maybe a little bit up here too, just kind of Brighten up the area a little bit, make it a little bit softer. Just so you don't have any super harsh kind of brownish black lines. I'm gonna make sure everything looks a little bit snowy, just a little bit. It does look like that kind of icicle effect is coming down from that upside down V area here too. It's so a little bit of white, I'm sweeping down like so. This area got a little bit too thick with white, so I'm gonna go in there with some green, kind of thin it out. Perfect. All right. On the top area of my door, I'm gonna use my small brush and my yellow paint. It does look like there's some light peeking through the little window and it's just kind of like side to side. Just a little bit of light yellow. And then I can use the back of my small brush 
and dip it into the black just a tiny bit and then make the doorknob over here to the left in the center area so just barely pushing on my brush while i have the black on the back of my small brush i can go back a little bit more and i'm going to start making the buttons on the snowman's underbelly area so there's one and two And if you're still working on any of the other areas, take your time, take your time. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the two eyes, one on the left side and one on the right side. I can go in there and make a smile too. I be super careful, this is gonna be tiny little dots. You even get some off of my paper towel. It went a little bit big. It might go back. I'm gonna surround it. Yeah, <laughs> my smile got big with those. I'll go back and I will um, white out some of the the black there. <laughs> that looks kind of silly. Perfect. And then I'm gonna make the scarf on my snowman. Be sure that that black is nice and dry. But I'm gonna go into that cranberry color from one side to the next. And it's almost like an upside down V shape down here. Perfect. You don't even have to clean that cranberry color once you're done. You can go back to your um, uh, cranberry if you need to go back but I'm just gonna wipe off some of it and I'm gonna go into that yellow. So that yellow and that cranberry are gonna make kind of a nice orangish color. You can even mix some more on your wax paper. Again, my brush is definitely had its last day. I'm gonna go in there and make a carrot shaped nose. I push down on it and then it comes up a little bit. Giving it a little bit of a carrot shaped nose. Once that's dry, I'll go in there and kind of touch up the mouth area a little bit more with just some white paint and just kind of white out any extra black that I don't want peeking through. I think that's it. I think I'm gonna do a little double check. If you wanna go back and touch anything up, you're always welcome to go back and touch things up. Just be very aware of what colors touching each other. So um, if you wanna build on top of something, be sure it's nice and dry. I'm gonna go in here and kind of touch up between this kind of finger is area of my snowman. Um, be, and again, be sure that, uh, you know, that the harder you push on your brush, the thicker the line becomes. So be aware of how hard you're pushing on the brush. If you need anything to be a little bit more smooth, you can always add a little bit of water to your brush. And that water will help move your paint. It'll help smooth out your paint. It'll help your um, paint work together a little bit better as well. But take your time, go back and touch up and get your painting exactly how you need it to be. But otherwise, your adorable greenhouse painting is all done. Oh, and if you wanted to, you can always add a cute red dot on the deer's nose. We didn't on, the, um, on ours, but uh, absolutely a, a fun option as well awesome thank you so much artists for joining us i hope you had fun don't be afraid to go back and touch things up uh, take your time and hopefully we will see you soon Bye bye